Hello everyone and thanks for tuning into the Financial Investor channel. My name is Brent and today we're going to be doing our weekly recap for November 12th through the 16th, 2018. This video should be fairly quick. We're going to go over our Facebook posts, some of the news and information that was shared on here and talk about a few of the indexes, whether they went up or down. Currently CNN Business is not really working very well for me, so if you go over to the marketplace and do check out the NASDAQ, many of my ETS and such are not able to be found, Amazon, emerging markets, some of the stocks I wanted to cover in today's video. So if you are brand new to the channel, I do make stock market, personal finance, real estate, real estate investment videos every single week. So consider subscribing and let's go ahead and get into it. So Apple and Amazon came to an agreement. Apple doesn't want any unauthorized refurbishers to be able to sell in the marketplace. Amazon said, okay, so this is a really good deal for Apple. It's not going to be negative, negatively affecting them. There's already individuals out there who are buying a whole load of products, refurbishing them and selling them themselves. Instead, Apple is saying, hey, none of that no more. We're going to want to specifically target authorized resellers. We're going to be taking a cut of that and it's going to be benefiting Apple and Amazon in that process. Altria had a couple news coming out that they may be going into some cannabis and also uh, one that did knock them was the possible ban on methanol cigarettes I believe. So that's some other information out there. Monday I released a video as the stock markets were open but banking financials were closed and then also how to target specific stock buys within M1 finance platform. Now with the split we have Democrats in the House and Republicans in the Senate. During this time frame, when everything is split, normally they focus on retirement, they focus on housing, they focus on, you know, retirement out there. So I think this is a pretty good move. So Trump is likely to lead on the Fannie and Freddie reform. I put out my video, I put out an article here on Monday, but also my video on Wednesday covering five stocks going next dividend next week. One of the main ones there was Hershey's. We also had, we had SBSI, which is the Southside Bank Shares. It's been paying out and raising dividends for the past 20 years, and this is a financial, so much better than, it could be possibly better than those JP Morgans, those Goldman Sachs that cut dividends back in the past. This one had plenty of cash in order to continue raising and paying out that dividend. Have you heard that there may be, you know, ghost cities within China and how the infrastructure plan back during the recession was for China to begin propping up apartments and building complexes throughout their cities and such in order to build up their economy well if you have not looked into it check out china's past infrastructure plan and how 22 percent of the buildings apartments and such in that area are just completely empty this is propping up their gdp making it seem like they're better than they are this is one of the main reasons i do not buy chinese stocks i can't trust their economy and i can't trust their stock market once they're if this is you know if it does happen in the future where they can no longer support their infrastructure plan that their real estate will implode and that'll cause the stock market to continue trending down lower than it has been going this is sort of maybe one of those things that specific you know in, in individuals have not been seeing crypto crash this week falling from seventy thousand uh, seven thousand dollar range into the five thousand dollar range i know a few individuals in my office that they were watching this go down and down and down it lost more than ten percent in a single day you know, it wasn't the hardest hit. Many of the other coins lost another 15, 20, 30 percent there. So interesting there as far as crypto goes. You know, for the start, there's crypto futures, which I believe is part of the reasoning for that. As the you know, everyone's got the Fed. You know, the people's got their hands in in crypto now, so it's easy to manipulate. Uh, new video out. We covered five stocks going next dividend. We already talked about that debt bubble possibly over. You know, the reason why we may have you know the economy could possibly get you know the economy is looking really good right now on you know i don't know as far as paper goes but debt you know we're blowing up on debt so this is a couple of little articles i wanted to share with you guys pal came out the fed came out here on wednesday night saying you know everything is looking as you know on plan the economy is looking good right now the plan staying forward we're looking possibly at another rate hike in december so that's already what was expected so the markets were already expecting it on thursday morning markets started out low but trended up higher 
If you haven't checked out M1 Finance, this is you know the last chance for the $20 referral currently during the month of November. If you do join M1 Finance, deposit 100 bucks, you get a $20 bonus in there for you and I. I think that's a good win-win. And then the total week's changes for this week, November 12th through the 16th, is that the S&P 500 fell back 1.61%. It fell for the first three days and then rise on Thursday and Friday. The Dow Jones here losing 2.22%. The NASDAQ losing 2.15%. The Russell 2000 losing 1.42%. The emerging markets were the winner this week. Coming up, 2.76. And then my portfolio was the loser of them, losing 2.63% this week. Apple wrecked me last week and this week as well. Apple is the only one of these ticker symbols that is showing up here. It is down, again, 5.35% here within the week. So they had some news come out on Monday. One of their distributors, one of their chip makers, I believe, came out, Lubitin saying that customers are asking to have their materials reduced or you know having the materials reduced because they're seeing a decrease in the need for their product so this news broke apple down five percent in the day continue to sell off as they were downgraded by i believe it wasn't goldman sachs it was the guggenheim they downgraded them down to a neutral from a buy and that just continued to sell them off. You know, in my opinion, I still believe Apple has a lot more potential for them. They're no longer a in uh, a technology-driven company. This is a services-driven company. Remember when Adobe, remember when Apple, or not Apple, Microsoft, they started moving to these perpetual licensing subscription-based models where they're more they have a lot of services that they offer and it's perpetual income so you're not focused on having to develop new products you're not having to sell specific iphones ipads in order to meet your numbers this is going to be beneficial for apple as they rotate from a you know straight tech company to be more of a services driven company you know same with cisco if you guys follow cisco's out there they used to do a lot of their sales of hardware, their switches, their routers, their ASAs, their access points. They're becoming more of a services-driven company. That's benefiting them out as well. If you follow them, they jumped up this week. So that is Apple. That was some of their Apple news, you know, between the agreement with Apple and Amazon, how they were downgraded, and how some of their, their suppliers there and that is that. So the S&P 500 moved down here three days in the week. Positive for the last two, down 1.61. Your today's not currently showing because this website is bugged out. 24-hour stock futures are currently flat. If I refresh this, stock futures are remaining flat. So not a whole lot of news here. I know President Trump came out tweeting that him, uh, the pres, you know, Trump and uh, I don't know the president's name over in China. But they're expected to meet, talk about possible deal over tariffs. Uh, President Trump also came out saying that they're not expecting to raise tariffs here towards the end of the year as they're making some sort of a trade deal. So I think that's going to really help the market bounce back out of those lows. So we shall see how that all plays out for the remainder of the year. Some of the most active stocks in the after hours, we have Verit, Verit, haven't heard of that one down 1.43%, whereas the rest of these have popped up. We can see that Cisco up 0.52%, Ford, I know there was some news out there with autonomous driving. They're going to be testing uh, some Ford vehicles with their autonomous driving somewhere, I believe, down in California. Comcast popping up, Apple, we have eBay, Microsoft. Microsoft is one of those stocks, you know, it used to be sort of included in that FANGMA. It was the, you know, they haven't really been affected negatively. You saw Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Google sell off crazy just within the last few months, you know, in, in October. Whereas Microsoft, they've hit some 52 week highs. I saw O, ticker symbol O, Realty Income has also hit some all time highs. And I think that was pretty interesting. So we already talked about Apple. Oil this week, oil fell until Tuesday, or Wednesday, I believe, before popping back up as Saudi Arabia is kind of cutting down a little bit on their supply. So here we can see Thursday's oil prices were on the rise after record Chinese crude imports ease concerns that the slowdown in the world's number two economy could stoke an emerging fuel gut. So oil prices were on the rise, so they were coming up because China imports eased concerns. So China came out probably easing some sort of concerns that others had that they would have some sort of a slowdown, which would be put in a gut 
uh, fuel glut. So interesting in there. If you guys want to pause the video, read through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, go ahead and do that. Oil uh, barrels are expected to continue lower, somewhere within that 60 price range. So we shall see there. I believe the, uh, what was it? I don't know if I have it over on my notes. Nope. So continuing on here. Dollar, I know the dollar got weaker this week. I, b I believe that's what kind of helped the stock market begin to build up here on Thursday, Friday. We can see that just during the whole week, we, we saw last week that the dollar grew stronger, stronger, stronger throughout the last week. This week, it trended you know, down rates. Uh, bonds were getting bought up extremely heavy this week. We saw that bonds were, were continuing to get bought up. Uh, I think that really, you know, I think that benefited the stock market a little bit. They were trying to cause some sort of a bottoming out period. The dollar got much weaker. The bonds fell by, you know, rates were at 3.17, I believe, last week. Current bond rates for the 10-year is at 3.07. So we could see the 10-year bond fall below a 3% going into next week or the week after. So we shall see how that all plays out here in the future. So that is all I did want to cover in today's video. If you are brand new to the channel, again, I do make stock market, personal finance, and other videos. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell to be notified every time I put out some new content. Question for you guys. If you guys have anything you would like to have discussed, whether it's stock market, dividends, investing picks, real estate, let me know in the comment section below. Drop your comment down there. So I'd love to hear from you guys as far as what sort of videos and questions that you have. That way I can go ahead and create some content. I really want to roll out some new content. I'm going to be rolling out some new content. I have a lot of stuff planned. I'm trying to up my website as well put out content on there going over the four methods, you know, four steps to investing, getting your personal finance in order, choosing your personal investment, you know, your financial investment vehicle. My two main ones are stock market investing and real estate investments. Those will be two of my focuses there as I kind of discuss on my website. But I'm going to be putting out some more content here on the channel. So leave your questions in the comment section below. And of course, quick disclaimer, I'm not any sort of financial advisor, tax professional. The information provided in these videos is for entertainment and fun. I, you know, basically it. So thank you all for tuning in. I will see you next time. Have a great one. Bye-bye.